What's your connection with Fitzroy? Um, well, at the moment I book all the bands at the Hunters Club, so and I live up in North Victoria. Yeah. Uh, have you ever lived in Fitzroy? Yeah, well I've been in North Fitzroy, which I guess is just that little tiny point of for about two, three years. And before that, um, I spent a lot of time in Collingwood. So. Yeah. And where were you before you moved to this part of Melbourne? Well, originally I was in Collingwood, and then I yeah. kind of went over to the western suburbs for a while. Yeah. Yeah, over all this guy. And then travelled a bit, then came over here. Yeah. Okay. And would you say that Fitzroy has a unique character or a unique identity compared to other places you've lived? Or? Yeah, I guess my connection with Fitzroy has always been live music. Um, playing in bands since I was about 15. And sort of did my first gig over at the Evelyn when that was a bit of a pumping kind of still pretty gutsy indie sort of venue. Um, and that's been my main connection with the place and I've always come and seen shows and generally they've been around here. Yeah. 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 So, so you think that um, Fitzroy and Collingwood is pretty unique because of the live music scene? Yeah, I guess that's sort of my main passion and what I've always done so that's the thing I notice and, and that's what keeps drawing me back to this area every time I sort of left and come back for whatever. And now I'm sort of employed in that, that kind of industry so to me that's a massive standout point. Yeah. Is, is the live music. Yeah. 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 And, and so, so what, what do you do now? What's, what's your I plan? book all the bands at the Punters Club. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another thing that I do which is just once a year which is um, it's called Winter 2C which is the Fitzroy Collingwood Music Festival. Yeah. yeah. And what, what, what's um, the festival? What's, what's that about? Well it's um, it covers all the live music venues in Collingwood and Fitzroy. So I think within a two kilometre radius there's something like this year we have 36 venues, um, so it's a pretty concentrated kind of space of, of live music venues, mm. which is pretty unique to yeah. not only sort of Melbourne but lots of other places. Um, and the festival is just a two-week program of, of sort of celebrating that culture and, and what happens here, you know, day in day out. So, so the um, having lots of live venues is good for cultivating new bands and new, new acts. Yeah, I mean, venues always are, because if there's no venues, there's nowhere for bands to play, really. Yeah. Um, but I think what's unique about this particular area is that consistently over the last 12 years, um, the community that's just seemed to have developed, because of lots of reasons, I think, um, has meant that, that we still have this incredible concentration of, of live music venues, as opposed to, say, St Kilda, where it's always kind of happened, but at the end of the day, all you sort of left with now is the SB, you know. Um, there's not that concentration yeah. that we have here. Yeah. yeah. Do, do, do you think there's any reason why there's that concentration in this area? I don't know. I've thought about it a lot. I think, um, you know, probably, probably, yeah, sort of around the 12 years ago, there was a lot more rental accommodation available. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's obviously a lot cheaper for people to live here and really close to the city. So yeah. um, Carlton's always sort of been a bit more highbrow and you've got the East Melbourne which is all very close but, but probably though it's always been a lot more than, than Fitzroy was. It's obviously changed a lot now. Yeah. So there was this incredible sort of density of students, you know, artists, musicians, all kind of living in, in an area. Um, and, and I guess the Punters Club and probably the Evelyn were sort of how I remember them as probably being pretty... Um, you know, instrumental in, in housing indie alternative music. Um, why it hasn't fallen on its ass, you know, sooner, I don't know. Yeah. Um, given that now property values are really high and um, a lot of people are renting, you know, sort of Brunswick, Thornbury and having to move out where it's a little bit cheaper, you know, the musicians, the artists, the students. Um, but people still keep coming back and it's almost like, well, you know, the idea of this being a, a bit of a live music artistic capital of Melbourne yeah. um, has been quite entrenched and strong. And yeah. because so many of the venues have been solid and been doing it for so long, um, you know, that's mm. what's kept it strong. Although, you know, that, that could all change yeah. any year. <laughs> yeah. So, so you see this, um, like, rising property values, at, um, rising rents as the biggest threat to, to the live venues around here? Yeah, and you know, and just generally cultural shifts. Um, yeah. You need people to go to gigs, yeah. and you need to. I think there needs to be a lot more support from the government level on promoting live music as, as a separate 
entity to the music industry. You know, lots of bands get to sell records, lots of record companies make lots of money, you know, internationals come and tour, but at the end of the day there's no real focus on, hey, this is a really valid cultural um, sort of aspect mm. to especially young people's culture. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, people now are a lot more inclined to potentially go to a bar, have a drink, meet up, yeah. and then maybe go see a band or maybe they go have dinner. Whereas, you know, eight years ago you'd just walk down to the tote and you'd know you'd see where your mates there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think, you know, once again there's always dips and, and rises in how culture kind of moves and changes and yeah. live music definitely is, um, has been back on the rise in quite a while. There was sort of this weird, oh my god, electronic music's going to take over. You know? yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it's another really uniquely Melbourne thing is the classic corner part that's always got a band. It's very Australian, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not so prevalent in you know, other cultures. Really. And is, is it true that the planet is closing down? Yeah. <laughs> well, around the top. Yeah. Um, probably early next year. Mm. And are there any <coughs> ideas on what it's going to become? No, the situation is that the landlord and the current lessee um, have been trying to renegotiate the lease for about 10, 12 months. Yeah. And um, it's you know sort of finally been decided that they're not going to come to an amicable agreement. So um, basically the lease, you know, it's up to the landlord what he does now with the lease and with the, the property. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're not sure. Yeah, so it could mean the, the end of one of the last live venues. Yeah, which is why I was sort of commenting that, that, you know, it has been interesting in this area that there's been those solid kind of stock horses that have kept it all going in terms of, you know, every night of week which we're putting on live music. So, you know, maybe taking the punters club out of that um, recipe, it'll be interesting to see what happens, I think, specifically yeah. with, you know, the Brunswick Street hotspot. Um, yeah. I don't know how much of an effect it will have overall, but I think there is a specific aspect of the culture of the street that that will be. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much.